Hi, my name is Dr. James Gray, and I'm a radiation oncologist with Tennessee Oncology, and I work at the Sarah Cannon Cancer Center at Centennial Medical Center in Nashville. I'm here today to talk to you some about prostate cancer. Prostate cancer is one of the parts of my, my practice that I spend a lot of effort on. Prostate cancer is a very common malignancy in men. It is actually the most common non-skin cancer that we find in men. It represents now around 218,000 diagnoses in the United States every year. And right now there are probably some two million men in this country who actually have prostate cancer, either diagnosed or which has been treated or they're following it. An amazing number of men will develop prostate cancer within their lifetimes. Studies have even shown that a high percentage of men over the age of 70 have prostate cancer, which is completely asymptomatic. It's not bothering them. But the way that we deal with prostate cancer in today's world is generally to monitor whether or not we have a high suspicion of prostate cancer being present. So in today's world, the most commonly utilized tool is a blood test called PSA, prostate-specific antigen. Prostate-specific antigen is uh, found in increased levels in the bloodstream when a man has prostate cancer. Unfortunately, it can also be elevated in other situations such as benign enlargement of the prostate gland or infection of the prostate gland. So there are other circumstances that can raise the PSA level. We commonly think of 4.0 as a common upper end of normal, and if a man has a PSA above that, that we tend to want to investigate further. That's not an easy rule to follow, however. We also follow the speed at which it may raise uh, uh, into a higher level. We follow the uh, absolute levels from year to year. So PSA can help us, but cannot in and of itself establish the diagnosis of prostate cancer. Preferably, we look at a combination of factors, and this also includes the thing that most men don't want to think about, but it's called the digital rectal exam. And although an uncomfortable exam for most men, this is an exam that can help us by knowing whether or not there's any abnormality that can be felt in the prostate gland itself. Typically, we're looking for a hardness or a nodule. But the majority of the diagnosis in today's world we don't have any abnormality that we can feel in the prostate gland. We simply detect an elevated PSA, or perhaps more importantly, a PSA that's rising sharply. And the way that prostate cancer is then diagnosed is to have a biopsy done. A biopsy is when we insert a very skinny needle into the prostate tissue and remove some tissue. Typically, this is done with a man lying on his side with an ultrasound probe that's placed in his rectum and we introduce the needle into several different locations into the prostate, pull out several different samples, and these samples are looked at by a pathologist, which is a doctor who specializes in determining whether or not those cells contain cancer. If the cancer diagnosis is established, then we then go into a process of determining, well, how extensive is this prostate cancer? But once we establish the diagnosis of prostate cancer and we have a firm understanding about how extensive the cancer is and how aggressive it appears to be, then we have to counsel that gentleman as to what his treatment options are. And it's important to understand that a lot of diagnoses of prostate cancer in today's world are made in a man with such an early stage, low risk prostate cancer that in reality, he doesn't need immediate treatment, and in fact, he may not need treatment at all. If a gentleman presents with prostate cancer that is fairly low risk, early stage, what we call organ confined, or it doesn't seem to have escaped the prostate gland, if that man has what we consider to be a life expectancy of less than 10 years, certainly less than five years because of his current age or his comorbidities, other existing problems with his heart, his lungs, something of that nature, we may really decide that it's not appropriate to do any treatment for that prostate cancer because it takes a long time for the cancer to grow, progress, and cause him problems, and an even longer time for it to threaten his life. So some men are best managed by doing nothing. So when we start discussing prostate cancer treatment options, it's a very detailed treatment, uh, or excuse me, a very detailed discussion that we need to go into to decide what are the best options for this particular man because there are several options that appear to have similar outcomes, similar cure rates, if you will. 
we have to analyze each treatment based upon what its likelihood is of eradicating the disease and also what its likelihood is of actually causing a problem because we actually do the treatment. And I mean side effects and the possibility for long-term complications. The major treatment options for prostate cancer tend to involve either surgical removal of the prostate or radiation treatment of the prostate. Now, surgical treatment is considered by many to be the gold standard of treatment, but in reality, in today's world, it's one of several good treatments that are available for a man with prostate cancer. Men with prostate cancer can be cured of their cancer by removing it with surgery. There is no doubt of that. And as a matter of fact, the cure rate is quite high. In the early stages of prostate cancer, that cure rate can be on the order of 90%. And that's outstanding considering the cure rates we achieve with some other cancers. The major alternative to surgical treatment is radiation treatment. And radiation treatment is a technique by which we expose the cancer cells in the prostate and even perhaps around the prostate to enough radiation energy that we cause their destruction. Radiation, like surgery, however, is not perfect. It does, it does not guarantee el uh, elimination of the cancer cells, and it does not guarantee that we can do that without causing problems because radiation can also injure healthy tissues. We discussed different forms of radiation treatment and basically split this into two options. One is that we aim the radiation at the prostate from outside of the body. We call this external beam radiation therapy. And the other is that we place radioactive sources inside the body, inside and around the prostate, by which we give the prostate radiation from the inside out, if you will. So these two various, these two options um, are offered to most men. In some situations, the radioactive seed implant is the uh, favored approach and it may be a, a very appropriate approach. In other situations, external radiation therapy may be a better option. On occasion, we combine the use of hormone blocking agents with these radiation approaches to be able to offer the best possibility for cure and the least likely uh, risk of side effects or complications. One of the newer treatment options for prostate cancer is the use of a very shortened course of external radiation therapy, which is termed stereotactic body radiotherapy. This is delivering extremely precise doses of radiation to a very confined part of the body which has been done in many different disease situations, but we're now applying to prostate cancer. We've learned that by placing small markers in the prostate gland, we can identify it very precisely throughout a treatment in which we aim up to 200 different beams of radiation at the prostate using the CyberKnife as a tool to do this. The CyberKnife is extremely precise. It allows us through robotic technology and very precise computer systems to deliver extremely precise doses of radiation to the prostate, yet effectively excluding other adjacent organs from excessive doses of radiation. In order to study the effectiveness of the CyberKnife as a treatment tool for prostate cancer, we have embarked upon a clinical trial here at Centennial Medical Center to see how well these patients tolerate treatment and what the long-term results are. We're hopeful that this will actually improve our cure rates or perhaps decrease our complication rates, but we simply don't know that yet. And so we're encouraging patients to look at this as a new option for how to have their prostate cancer treated. If you or anybody you know is diagnosed with prostate cancer, I recommend that you get as much information as you can about how you need to proceed. You need to understand your disease and you need to understand your treatment options. Now, while most of this can come directly from the urologist that probably established your diagnosis with a biopsy, it is frequently advisable to have another opinion from another type of doctor, such as a radiation oncologist. Now, you can also get information on your own. There are many sources for doing this on the internet, and one source here locally is called the Mini Pearl Cancer Foundation, and you can access this through the internet on minipearl.org.